Good morning, everyone. For some of you, maybe good afternoon and even good evening. Thank you for attending today's webinar. This is the second of the series of the webinar that we plan on the topic of imagery and remote sensing for higher education community this year. For this webinar, we would like to bring the topic of advancing your curriculums with the latest image and raster analysis tools. Now we understand many of you has been using ArcGIS for teaching and research. Image analysis has always been part of the ArcGIS core capabilities. With the advancement of the ArcGIS, today we have more comprehensive imagery tools and solution available, and also the deployment options for you. Before we start, a little bit of housekeeping. All attendees are in the listen-only mode, but feel free to enter your questions in the question windows at any time. Some questions we will cover during the QA session, but if there are many questions that we cannot answer due to the time constraint, we will create a FAQ document afterward. This session is also recorded, and we will share the recording and the slides afterward. At the end of the webinar, we will launch an exit survey. So please do participate on the survey so you can help us improving our webinar. It's also a good way to connect with us if you have questions or would like to request for assistance. One more thing. Before we continue, we would like to ask you a poll question. So let's open the first poll question. The question is, are you teaching imagery and remote sensing? Now, this is a multiple choices question. So feel free to check that those that apply to you. It seems that many of you has responded. Awesome, thank you so much. We can close the poll now. Now I would like to introduce our presenters for today's webinars. We have Peter Becker. Peter is a group product manager with ArcGIS imagery product team at ESRI. We also have Finai, Fis Van Baran, Principal Product Manager at ArcGIS Imagery Product Team as well. And I'm Kansarina Kurnia. I'm Senior Solution Engineer with Education Team. I will be mostly moderating the session and share the resources at the end. For the agenda, Peter will start with overview of ArcGIS as a comprehensive imagery system and also introduce the deployment options available today. And Fine, we're gonna bring us to explore the image and raster analysis tools, especially the latest ones. Then Peter gonna cover the topic of deployment best practices for teaching and research. And I will close with QA session and share the resources. We have a lot to cover. So without further ado, let me stop sharing and let Peter to take over. Peter, time is yours. Thank you, Rina. Okay, um, so what I wanted to start off with is talking about um, the ArcGIS system. I mean, it has an amazing set of capabilities, and some of you may have already seen this slide. Um, I use this very often as an introduction to emphasize that ArcGIS actually has five key sub-capabilities related to imagery. Uh, there is the content, a vast amount of content that's available. There is how do we actually manage all that content and make it accessible to people. Uh, there is the aspect of mapping, in other words, how do you actually take imagery and convert it into products uh, such as author photos, drain models. There is the analysis, which is going to be the focus of today's webinar. And then there's also the visualization and exploitation, which is really about how do we take that imagery and the results of that analysis and share that with, with, with users and create an, an enthralling applications out of it. The way ArcGIS is broken down is to define for imagery is to define it as a suite of products, and we for ArcGIS, which is referred to as ArcGIS Image, and as part of ArcGIS Image, we break it down into the Image Analyst, which is a capability of the desktop in ArcGIS Pro. We have ArcGIS Image Server, which is part of ArcGIS Enterprise, uh, which is really for scaling up imagery analysis in very large areas. Then there is a uh, we're releasing soon ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online, which is a full SaaS solution for working with imagery. And then we also have ArcGIS Image dedicated, and I'll be explaining a little bit more about that a, a, a bit later. So this is really the, all the, the capabilities, there are extensive capabilities, but today we're going to be focusing on the analysis aspects. Before we do that, I'd like to just 
highlight a couple of aspects related to the content of the imagery or the content of imagery. So ArcGIS provides a lot of content. Um, this content can come from various services and many of you as students are likely just to be utilizing that um, services and consuming services such as the Landsat, the Sentinel, as well as NAEP services or motor services. These are services you can just to connect to and get access to literally petabytes of imagery that are streamed from the servers directly to your applications. But you also may have a lot of your own content. And this is where ArcGIS supports all types of um, formats and what we call raster types. This is the ability to bring in content from lots of different sources, be they from different platforms such as satellites and drones and terrestrial um, uh, sensors, but also bring in lots of different modalities of data. So ArcGIS can work with categorical data, multispectral data, video, LIDAR. There are a lot of mod um, modalities of, of imagery that can be uh, supported. So basically brings together all these different this different content. The next aspect is related to image management and I just want to highlight a couple of ways in which image management can done, be done within ArcGIS. The main usage is to, Arc, to use ArcGIS Pro. So ArcGIS Pro is used where you have your imagery typically in a local uh, on a local disk or in maybe a share on a, on a network um, and you use ArcGIS Pro to manage your data. Very often you use that using what we call mosaic data sets and then you can package that content as let's say a, a tile cache for rapid display and push that to ArcGIS online that can then be easily shared with large numbers of users that want to look at that content. We also have ArcGIS image server and that allows you to take a mosaic data set which is a way of managing large volumes of imagery and then publishing them to an image server and the image server has a lot of capabilities in being able to serve that imagery either as tile cache, dynamic imagery which is really powerful capability to process the imagery on the fly as it's accessed, tiled imagery which is really streaming image tiles to the client applications but it also scales up to perform imagery analysis and that can be that can be used to apply deep, uh, deep learning and other algorithms across very very large data sets. Um, we refer to this sometimes as curator managed. In other words, a certain number of people within the organization have published that data or managed that data and published that data to make it accessible to a large number of other users. Another way of managing data is what we sometimes refer to as user managed or hosted. And that is really where a user either in ArcGIS Pro or using the map viewer can then take their imagery which is sitting on their desktop and host it or publish it to ArcGIS um, image server and then that becomes available um, for others to quickly access and similar they could do the same thing in ArcGIS online and publish it as 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 tile packages to ArcGIS online as tile packages are really just the sort of the visualization of the data they don't actually contain the the, the, the detailed pixel values what we've also or just releasing at the moment is ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online and this extends this hosted capability not only to publish to um, image server in, on an enterprise environment but to push that imagery directly into ArcGIS Online and then stream that as tiled imagery or perform analysis. So <clears throat> The fourth option is ArcGIS Image Dedicated, and this is really for organizations that have large volumes of imagery uh, stored already in the cloud. So, if as it, uh, um, so, you might have, for example, Landsat data or Sentinel data, and you want to run analytics against that, uh, or you have other data sets already in the cloud, then that's really where ArcGIS Image de um, Dedicated is used. We 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 provide the infrastructure, and the processing is then performed in in the cloud. So, these are different ways of uh, managing the data, but they also affect how we can um, do different types of analysis. So when we do analysis, when you do analysis, and Vinay will be showing you all the different types of analysis that you can do, you will see that you can run that analysis either directly in ArcGIS Pro connecting to the data. Alternatively, those same analysis can be performed on the server. You can submit the analysis task to the server and the server can perform it. You can interface with those servers using clients. They could be ArcGIS Pro, they could be the Map Viewer, or they can use Python Map Notebooks. So these can act as clients to interact with the, the, the processing being performed on the server. Alternatively, if you're using ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online, they can also do the analysis by submitting the, the tasks to ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online and the pro analysis will be performed there. 
And then also, as you want to really scale this up, you can use um, uh, um, ArcGIS image dedicated. I'll be coming back to this a little bit later. First, I think what we need to do is to have a look at some of the some of the um, analysis capabilities that are available to you. So with that, we'll hand it over. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. That's exciting to see how much development of the suite of product of ArcGIS image and the deployment option available as well. So, so it gives more flexibility for teaching and also research and also they collect it as a system. Um, before we move to the next topic, we would like to do another poll question, please. So the question is, uh, what primary tools are you using for image and raster analysis at the moment? So we can like some of you probably using ArcGIS Pro, some of you maybe still using ArcMap or Enterprise Image Server or others. Um, feel free to, to choose that apply to you. This is a multiple question as well. And I'm gonna give you a few moments to answer that. All right, I think that most of you have responded. Thank you so much. We can close the pool now. Next, let's have Finai take over to bring us to explore some of the latest analysis tools. Finai, time is yours. Thank you. All right, so I'll be talking a little bit about image analysis in ArcGIS. Image analysis is really about extracting information from imagery. ArcGIS, we have a robust set of image analysis capabilities that run the gamut from deep learning to multidimensional analysis to terrain analysis and tools to perform advanced analytics on different types of data. At the heart of that, we brought a lot of these capabilities to desktop, enterprise, the APIs, and now, like Peter's mentioned, we've taken all of this to the cloud through ArcGIS image for ArcGIS Online. Before I go any further, I'd like to talk a little bit about raster functions. Raster functions, they're essentially the foundational technology our image processing and raster analytics capabilities are built on top of. Simply putting this, raster functions are image processing algorithms and they can be used as is, or you can chain them together to create focused products. And these are just some of the different products that can be created, these products that you see on the screen. Workflows such as uh, wildlife corridors assessments, then determining first responder management areas, cross-country mobility applications by the military. These are just some of the applications. And here, I've just listed some of the core raster functions that we've exposed. Out of the box, like I told you, we have more than 150 functions. So really your imagination is the limit on how you can chain these together to create information products. And uh, something to note, something to keep in mind, you can apply these functions or you can apply these algorithms either on the fly to your imagery or it can be used to create persisted products. Now, quickly I'll go over couple demonstrations or I'll go over one demonstration which highlights raster functions within ArcGIS. So firstly, probably most of y'all who've worked with different sensor data sets, this is a worldview scene. Now if you look at this to, com to composite or to create one worldview basic scene, it comes with over 30 different tiles, right? So the process is you need to composite the bands together. You need to stretch or enhance the imagery, apply a convolution filter, apply a geometric correction, and then pan sharpen your imagery. It can be tedious. This could take about three hours to create one scene, right? So here with ArcGIS, I've just brought this image into my map. And in a second, the image draws. Now, how did we make this possible? Behind the scenes, what we're doing is we're compositing everything together. We're applying a geometric correction or orthorectification, applying the convolution filters, enhancing the images, and you can add more functions. Essentially, we've created a product on the fly. And we've done this using raster functions. 
Now, before I go on ahead, let me just give you a quick overview of what raster functions really are through this app. The raster functions, you can access that directly through the raster functions pane within ArcGIS Pro. And here, these are all the functions that we provide you with access to. Like I said, more than 150 different raster functions. Now, I'll just apply a simple function to that product that we've just extracted. I specify which is my NDVI, sorry, which is my visible band, which is my infrared band. As students, as educators, as analysts, you'll know what I'm doing. This is a simple vegetation index that I'm applying to my imagery. I'm applying a color map so that I can visualize the data set as well. And in a matter of seconds there, I get an NDVI representation of my data, right? Now that was using an out of the box function or an out of the box system process. What we also provide you with is the ability to chain these processes together and create your own custom function chains. So here's something that I've created. The tradecraft is built into the raster function template using the raster function editor. So to the user, you have no idea what's happening behind the scenes. We've just simplified the entire workflow. You pick your input raster, your pre raster, your post raster, and create an imagery layer. And let's navigate over to our area of interest. And here, essentially, we've got Landsat scenes. And my objective here was to get these burn scars or assess these burn scars. And comparing the two images, you clearly see there are differences between the two, right? Now applying that function returned this raster. In a click, it's just returned my burn scar. So that was just a quick overview of system functions that we're providing you with. And then we're showing you how you can chain these functions together to create custom products. Heading back over to my slides. Next, for I'll talk a little bit about multidimensional analysis. For the educators, for the students in the room, if you're not a frequent user of multidimensional data, you may wonder how it can help you in problem solving. How can you tie it into your curriculum? As you have all been experiencing, it's becoming more and more vital to understand how, why, and where things are changing, not just what changes have occurred. So you might be interested in using historical raster data to predict flood locations, or you might want to model carbon stocks over time. Either which way you're looking to find anomalies, you want to explore trends, then forecast and perform predictive analysis and evaluate changes, right? There are so many questions we can answer using this time series or this multidimensional data. So what is multidimensional data? Well, many of us, working within the context of GIS, we're familiar with working with two-dimensional data or rasters that have an X and a Y component. Some applications, they do require the additional dimension of height, like an elevation model. When we're talking about multidimensional data, we're adding multiple dimensions to the data, for example, time, height, or depth. We could also be interested in exploring more than one variable in a multidimensional data set. For example, temperature, sea surface temperature. And as you can see, this is stacked as a cube of data sets or information. This is why it's sometimes referred to as an image cube or a data cube as well. Now, I'll just go through a quick demonstration. Here I've got a multi-dimensional data set. And to start with, I want to show you how we can explore this. We can load the net CDF file or the multi-dimensional data set as a multivariate data set. 
So I pick my file. I pick the variables of interest, which are these three variables. And I add it as a multivariate raster that adds it as a container into my map. Now this is designed specifically, the multi-dimensional tab that you see on top is designed specifically to explore and work with multi-dimensional data sets. You can easily switch through different variables. You can switch through time. You can step through time. And here you can step through depths. And now I can animate and step through each one of the slices as well. This is a sea surface temperature multidimensional data set with 35 years of monthly observations in one cube. That's 400 slices of imagery. Again, going to the multidimensional tab, we have a series of tools calling the aggregate data tool. I can aggregate my data from weekly to 35 slices yearly slices of data and this is a common requirement when you have rather dense data to work with so you can see i've dropped the density of the data next i can continue my workflow and i want to identify anomalies within this data set across these different years so i've generated an anomaly data set using the anomaly detection tools and as we step through time, we can visually notice different anomalies. Now, based on the anomalies that we've detected, we can quickly create a temporal profile for any given region within this map. So here I can pick a point and this is essentially the sea surface temperature over time. And right here, you can see two outliers right off the bat. One in 1983, the next is in 1988, essentially the El Nino years. So we could easily visualize the data set, perform analysis, and understand certain phenomena right here. Next, uh, I will analyze this data. Let me get rid of the chart. I'll analyze this data, take it a step further. This is precipitation data. Using our trend analysis tools, I can generate a trend raster where areas in purple indicate increasing trends and the green areas show decreasing precipitation tens, trends. This modeled data set is then used to calculate or predict the future precipitation. In this case, I'm predicting it out all the way to 2028. Now, once this is done, obviously the applications are endless. This can be used in applications such as suitability analysis and predicting where to grow certain types of growth, uh, crops. Next is change detection. Change detection is really valuable to any imagery and raster analysis workflow. There's a ton of imagery that's collected from a large number of sensors, and majority of that data is being used for monitoring environmental changes, land use, land cover change detection, and similar workflows. We have two key change detection methods, image to image change detection and detecting change across a stack of images or time series images. We've added a change detection wizard to simplify workflows and it's built into the system and built into the system is also the Landsat based CCDC algorithm and land render algorithm for time series change detection, both of which I'll be showing it to you in a demo. So first, uh, let's just go over the change detection wizard. Now detecting quantifying change, like I said, is an important workflow for imagery and raster workflows users. Um, I'll go over the change detection wizard in this particular workflow within ArcGIS Pro. Here you're looking at the NLCD data set for 2001, 2016. And I want to identify changes, categorical changes over this region near Vegas. So I can invoke the 
uh, change detection wizard specify I can pick from three types of change detection methods I pick my two rasters 2001 and 2016 categorical uh, data and then I can specify which classes I want to identify the from class and the post classes I can pick a couple other classes that I want to see and here you can quickly preview your results comparing the two you have a clear delineation of the class changes I can then apply filters to remove noise from my results smooth out my data set then we can write out the data set as a raster a feature class or even a reusable raster function template which we just talked about when I save it as a raster function template it launches the function template in the function editor I can tweak parameters save it out and I can share it with users Okay. The next workflow is difference calculation between two multispectral images. I've got two Landsat scenes, pre-fire, post-fire, and I really want to generate a burn scar map. So I'll launch the change detection wizard. And you've probably noticed automatically this time it assumes we're doing a pixel value change. Here you can calculate either the absolute difference or the relative difference. You can also do difference based on a band index. So here I'm choosing NDVI, specify my parameters. It does a difference. It gives me a difference of the histograms as well. I can then interact with my histogram, mask out values that are not relevant to me. And now that I've got areas of interest, I can add a class, I can give it a name, and I can see the results again on the fly. Again, I head into the same post processing pane and we can run through the previous workflow that I just showed you. I can specify if I, if I want to save it out as a data set or a function template. We talked about multidimensional data sets. This works with multidimensional data sets as well. You pick your variable pick two sli time slices that you want to work with and then the rest of the workflow is the same lastly we can perform a time series change using a stack of images i can perform either continuous change detection or i could even apply the land trender specify the bands of interest specify the type of change that i'm looking for and run this obviously is a more rigorous process so after a while we get the results the next is the land trender like i said we have two new uh, algorithms for time series change ccdc and land trender so the forests of oregon is a large commercial timber production area but many areas are now protected for conservation Using this algorithm, I'll detect forest disturbance and illegal logging. The input is an image cube containing 80 Landsat scenes collected over 34 years. First, we calculate the NBR using a raster function. It highlights areas of forest disturbance. Next, we can bring up the analyze change using land trender tool to model change at each pixel across time. We specify additional parameters, and the result is a multi band raster containing model coefficients. And here you have it. I can now bring up the temporal profile to explore changes. And here I'll bring up a point where we see abrupt decrease in NBR value, showing us exactly when forest disturbance occurred. And then you can see a slow recovery stage. This model raster can help 
create many types of analytical maps. For instance, I can create a disturbance map. I can pull up the change detection tool again and using the enhanced change detection tool, I can specify the type of change I'm interested in, the earliest change in this case. Uh, I can set the duration to four years so I can see abrupt changes and I can filter out subtle changes as part of my parameters. And here's the output, a disturbance map where each pixel shows a date when disturbance is started. Darker colors indicate earlier years, the lighter colors indicate logging that occurred in more recent years. Now, the square patterns is due to the region being a protected region. And uh, you can see it now clearly by overlaying the forest management layer. On the right, the dark red disturbance areas within the protected land and it's this really happened in the earlier years when the land was not regulated yet. Using the change detection tool with a different filtering parameter, I've also created a recovery map. And lastly, using classification tools, I've created a classified time series map of four classes. We can step through that time and see how things have changed. Using the summarize categorical raster tool, I can chart the forest changes through time, which will help us understand the dynamics and resilience of the forest system. Next, deep learning. Why is deep learning important? Now, this, this is a question that I'm asked often. There is a fire hose of imagery and data that is streaming down the pipe daily. Huge amounts of sensors, massive amounts of drones that capture high resolution, high temporal data, which quickly becomes hard to manage. And it's not just management. The traditional approach to taking a couple images, extracting features, they don't scale anymore. Hence, we have deep learning. It's teaching the machine to extract features for you. Now we will be going a little more in depth into deep learning in uh, subsequent presentation webinars. ArcGIS also provides an end-to-end -end deep learning solution. We do provide an end-to-end -end deep learning solution all the way from managing large collections of data to providing tools for capturing training samples, training your models and running inferencing. The big benefit of running this capability is it doesn't stop there. We've got tools to perform downstream analysis with these results and share it out to field apps and dashboards to enable intuitive visualization of the derived insights. We do have a powerful end-to-end -end story, but it still can be challenging for some users because they don't have training data or there are massive compute requirements or they just don't have the expertise to train models. So something we've introduced is pre-trained models. Again, I don't want to get into the depths of this. There's a link that's being posted. I'd recommend you guys look at that. With this, we've simplified the whole process of deep learning. You can directly use these models directly within ArcGIS Online or Pro. Bring your images, point to the models, and extract features. You have the ability to retrain the models to your data and your geographies as well. Next, let's talk a little bit about our developer story. ArcPy provides a comprehensive library of pretty much all our desktop capabilities and the ArcGIS API for Python, it's a lightweight library that enables processing in your WebGIS. These APIs, they fortify our developer story, enables automation of a wide range of tasks simply using Python. We have modules for raster and image analysis that contain a number of classes, number of methods, functions, and this really shows you the breadth of capabilities that is exposed to our users. Functions to perform data conversion, reclassification, change detection, and more. So as an educator, researcher, or a student, how is it useful to you? A lot of our users love our tools, they love our user experiences, but there's a huge community who really want to take their workflows into environments like notebooks, Jupyter notebooks or ArcGIS notebooks. Once in that scripting environment, you can leverage these modules, automate your workflows and run with your workflows. 
You can automate your workflows and build custom apps as well. Now let's switch gears. I'll talk about analysis in online. ArcGIS image for ArcGIS Online brings analysis to you at scale. You no longer have to worry about infrastructure setup. Just upload your data, go on ahead with your image processing and analysis tasks. You have access to more than 150 functions out of the box tools, deep learning capabilities, all directly accessible within the map you're in online. This is especially useful when you want to be when you want to enable a number of uh, analysts or students, for instance, to perform image processing or analysis tasks on thin web clients. I'll dive into a couple demonstrations that highlights this capability. First is the Python API. Here we're performing wildfire analysis using the Python API with ArcGIS Image Online. First, we create hosted imagery layers. Uh, using the copy raster function over here, we specify our raster types as well. And once our layers have been created, these are the two layers. You can use the extract band function for visual assessment, and we can extract certain bands so that we can see through the smoke and through haze. Next, using we can use the NBR or the normalized burnt ratio to find burnt areas using the band arithmetic function and using map algebra. You can categorize this further using the remap and color map functions. You can save out the result and share the raster to our organization using the save method. Using histogram method, you can calculate the burn areas and eventually we can also plot a pie chart to categorize the burn by severity next is my last demonstration hosting and analyzing imagery it's important for power users researchers analysts and students in many ways the new arcgis image for online it provides hosted imagery capabilities along with advanced raster analytics in the cloud last year we've had a ton of fires and burnt 4.3 million acres in california to understand impacts of these fires we'll analyze the area near santa rosa using arcgis online for our analysis we'll use a collection of 10 satellite images that cover this region and these currently they reside on my local machine I'll show you how easy it is to create a layer now. Images, they can be hosted as static tiled imagery layers or dynamic layers that support dynamic mosaicing and on the fly server side processing. From the interface, users can select the layer configuration. And then you pick your raster type and the metadata. You fill out additional parameters if needed. And then all you need to do is simply drag and drop your imagery and the relevant meta information into the map, provide the metadata, fill out the item description, and the imagery layers will be created in ArcGIS Online. In the interest of time, I'm going to preload the imagery we brought it into our map and begin analysis. This is the central layer. And now we can use raster functions. Through the analysis tab, we can fire up the function editor. And the function editor provides you with access to all of those raster functions out of the box. You can chain them together to create custom workflows like this one, which can be shared across your organization. This evaluates burn severity. So once we've built this template, you can load it, set the parameters, preview it, and you could even run analysis. So I've generated this in advance over 3,000 square miles. And high burn severity areas are shown in orange. Now, the next question is, I'd like to see how many structures were in the path of the fire. And because we don't have building footprints previously mapped, we can leverage new capabilities, we can leverage the new deep learning capabilities in ArcGIS Online. 
you point to your image then you pick from a collection of deep learning models that we provide on the living atlas this includes models for road extraction land cover classification and in the, this case this particular the particular case it's building footprint extraction so let's take a look at the results the model was able to extract 25000 building footprints and we were able to determine 1500 structures were within the burn parameter this was just one example of using arcgis image for hosting large collections of images and performing advanced raster analysis so circling back to our first slide that was a quick summary of the image analysis capabilities that we have in ArcGIS. With that, I'll hand it back over to Peter. Thank you, Vinay. Uh, amazing demos you show. I always enjoy watching them. Uh, although I've seen them many times, they're still amazing to me. So um, what I wanted to do was to um, sort of summarize a little bit. Um, I'd mentioned this slide before, uh, which is really showing that you know, we've been focusing today really on the analysis aspect, but there are a lot of other aspects of working with imagery that are incorporated as part of ArcGIS. Uh, and I'd mentioned it's broken down into these sort of four, four key uh, products. So just to sort of re-emphasize, the different ways in which these, these products can be used, especially in education. The primary one is ArcGIS Pro with the Image Analyst extension. So that is really available to everybody for, for teaching and research purposes. It really is the primary workstation. Uh, you know, the ArcGIS is an incredibly powerful GIS and imagery is just a fundamental component of that. And with the Image Analyst extension, uh, this really is amazing how much analysis you can do. Um, so all the things that Vinay had been showing, working with multidimensional data, using the deep learning, all these tools can be worked directly within ArcGIS and desktop. Uh, so this it's a connected desktop. It works with the data locally, or you can actually work with data connected to the web as well, and obviously connected to the services and use it as a client to for, for different types of analysis as well. So that's really the, the primary one I would suggest all you know educators and research and students look you should have access to that that's an incredible wealth of information for not only studying uh, remote sensing but also to apply it in practice the next one is ArcGIS Enterprise with Image Server and this really is a uh, an enterprise solution. So within, let's say, a university, you may decide you want to set up ArcGIS Enterprise and set up ArcGIS Image Server on it. And that gives you a whole lot of capabilities. It enables you to serve out the imagery that you may have within, within, within the university, um, but it also allows students or others to host imagery. In other words, take their imagery that is on their desktops and load it into the servers and stream that back and then perform analysis on the data that has been uploaded onto those servers. This allows both desktop, web and notebooks to be used as clients. It does though require you to actually set up uh, the, the infrastructure uh, that can be on-premise infrastructure or it can be cloud infrastructure. Again, incredibly powerful capabilities for really scaling up the analytics if you need to. For those that don't want to set up their own infrastructure and want to go to pure to a SaaS solution, this is really where ArcGIS Online comes. And this has been extended now with the release coming this the, later this month of ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online. So this has similar capabilities to and the enterprise, only that you don't need to set up the infrastructure. You, um, users who have subscribed to um, ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online can take their images, upload it into ArcGIS M Online, stream it back to themselves or to others, and then also run analysis against against those those data sets. Uh, those those processing and storage does mind you consume credits within ArcGIS Online. And then lastly, there's ArcGIS Image Dedicated. This I'd mentioned before is a managed SaaS solution. Uh, this is really for organizations and possibly also universities if you have or you want to perform analytics against very large data sets uh, that are already stored in the cloud then instead of having to try and move that data to 
you know, on-premise or having to try and upload that into ArcGIS on, online. Uh, what you can do is you can get a subscription to ArcGIS Image Dedicated, and that will allow you to spin up infrastructure without actually managing that infrastructure. So that's that's the, the, fourth, the fourth option. So these are really the options of, of available to you. Um, I think you, you'll see that they're extremely broad and should handle all different aspects of uh, teaching and research. Uh, for a lot of users, I still suggest definitely look at ArcGIS Pro. It is the comprehensive imagery GIS system. Uh, and for lots of um, teaching and research applications, that would be the, probably the one that I would recommend you look at first. Uh, so uh, with that, um, we will then hand it back to uh, Rina. Sorry, I actually, am I still showing? Oh, I forgot one slide. Anyway, we'll come back to it. Arena, we can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Can do. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Peter, for the summary of the best practices and recommendations, and thank you for Afine as well. We let's do the QA session now, and after that, I'm gonna share some of the link to the resources and a couple of announcements. Um, we got a lot of questions in here, so let's start. I think first is the one that pertaining to the uh, Fine presentation. So uh, Fine James asked. What is the relationship between the model builder and custom raster function? Uh, so there are two different uh, ways to access processing. So the model builder is more of processing using geoprocessing technology, and that's been there forever. And it's not restricted to just imagery or rasters. We've got over 1,400 geoprocessing tools, which enables you know feature analysis, uh, database analysis, and imagery analysis, but none of that is on the fly. Now the raster functions that I showed you or the raster function editor, it chains image processing algorithms specifically, and it works only in the context of rasters. And this enables on the fly processing, like I said, so it's it's different from geoprocessing and geoprocessing does all of the processing on the source resolution while raster functions, it's, it's on the fly. It, what you're going to look at, the results that you're looking at, is initially a visual result, which you can then use to create persistent results. Awesome, thank you. Um, Stacy asks, is there a certain website that is good to get the multidimensional data sets? Uh, the data sets or the workflows? I think is the Stacy say is a multi-dimensional data set. Yes, Noah, they do provide uh, these data sets for free. Then Copernicus, they provide a huge collection of data sets, a massive collection of data sets. Um, Peter, you want to add anything to that where we could get these kinds of data sets? Uh, I mean, the, the 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 massive data sets that can be downloaded from from various from various websites, depending on on the app uh, on on what the area of research that you want to do. I mean, there's, there's, there isn't one. There are so many different places where you can download the multidimensional data, data sets, especially as net CDFs. Awesome, okay. Um, and I, there's a question from Shannon with the multidimensional data usage in pro, is there any learn lesson or training model to help the faculty or student learn more about how this works? Yes, definitely Shannon. And um, I'm gonna send email uh, around a week after the webinar, and I'm going to list all that resources for the multidimensional data and the lessons and also the workflow as well. Okay. Um, so something I'd just like to uh, quickly mention is we have these imagery workflows website, and there you have, it's, it's like an aggregator of all of our content. So there's a workflow which we have on multidimensional analysis. It points to blogs, learn lessons, videos, everything that you need to get started. So I think that would be a good place to get uh, started for multidimensional yeah, analysis. I think yes. we, might, we might be showing we might be showing that slide in a minute, which has got the links to that. So oh, cool. 
Okay, so um, Peter, there's a good question in here. What is the difference between ArcGIS Online Imagery and ArcGIS Image Dedicated? Uh, uh, the image dedicated is the management of very large volume that raster data. Is that correct? Um, yes. So ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online is based on the premise that a user has imagery that they upload and host in ArcGIS Image for um, in ArcGIS Online, and then they perform analysis on that. And that provides a totally a SaaS user interface where you you can use your um, your um, map viewer to run the different analysis tools, just like like Vinay was showing. So it's very very interactive. You get the the, the web the function editor uh, um, and all the the web tools for um, defining raster functions and applying those functions and performing analysis additionally you can use actually ArcGIS Pro as a client as well um, to um, connect to with ArcGIS online and submit a processing and analysis requests so it's it's a very interactive uh, environment for working with with that type of data ArcGIS image dedicated is is, is, is much more for users that have you know very large data sets that they want to run a specific type of analysis on. So they, they they may design that analysis in ArcGIS Pro and say, okay, I've got this analysis and I want to run this now on, on a very, very large data set that I have already hosted in cloud storage. Uh, so in that case, uh, you have you either install and, and run ArcGIS Enterprise on next to that cloud storage and then ArcGIS Enterprise can perform the analy analytics across that whole data set or you subscribe to ArcGIS Image Dedicated which just means that Esri will stand up that infrastructure for you and run that, that um, um, and then enable you to access those machines to perform an, um, the sort of scalable um, analysis on it. So it's a different, yeah, one, one is the, the, the ArcGIS Image Dedicated is more for that curator role where you have a large a lot of data uh, whilst the ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online is more that hosted uh, role where users upload their their their, their, their data and, and perform ad hoc ad hoc ad hoc analysis. Thank you, Peter. Another question in here, like for those of us without access to enterprise system, the new online option is very attractive. Will there be a way to manage the credit consumption, or how will the credit consumption compare with hosting tile layers? I believe your team is 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 going to release many documents on this, right? Correct. There's a, there'll, there'll be a lot of information on it. Um, the the, um, the 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 costing in terms of credits is similar to the rest of ArcGIS Online. When you upload data, um, you will be charged um, um, costs for storage, just like you um, get charged um, costs for, for example, loading tile uh, tile cache into ArcGIS Online. It's just now that you'll be if you have this user type extension, you can then upload imagery such as Landsat or any imagery you want into ArcGIS Online and that will then be charged like any other storage within ArcGIS Online and then as you perform different types of analysis depending on the extent of the analysis that you perform and the complexity of the ana analysis uh, that will will also burn off credits from uh, from from uh, from ArcGIS ArcGIS Online. Uh, similar we have this what we sometimes refer to as dynamic imagery this is sort of the on the fly processing capability you can create services that perform the on the fly processing capability and again those will just burn off uh, more more credits from your ArcGIS Online account. Can you tell us again when it's going to be the release of the the ArcGIS image in ArcGIS Online? It'll be it'll be re released the end of this month. Okay, it's end of this month. So any of um, you that that's that interested in there, it will be end of the month. Also the dedicated one. A question about the will be that be included in the education institutional license. We're still working on that. Our first priority is to to release the product first. Then we are definitely working on that. Um, there is a question in here is about the deep learning. We will, the next webinar, we plan it really in the deep learning, but uh, there is a quick question in here. Uh, you mentioned about AI and pre-trained model. Can this be run using ArcGIS Pro? Maybe yes. Vinay can answer that. Yes, so these uh, and our tools, they've been extended where you can actually point to folders on disk or you can point to online or you can point to your living atlas directly so you can use the new arcgis image for online to run deep learning against these models or you can use arcgis pro 
Awesome. And then we're going to send all the link to, to understand this more in the email coming up after the, after the webinar. Uh, I think one more question that I want to cover in here is, this is for Peter, I think. Can SaaS enterprise solution be part of locally hosted ArcGIS portal? Um, so I'm just, can you say that question again? I'm trying to read through it again, think through it again. Yeah, so, yeah. it's really big. Yeah, <laughs> can the, the SaaS enterprise solutions that we have um, be part of the locally hosted ArcGIS portal? I guess once you, you use okay. it in the SaaS, yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. So let, 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 let me let me let me re-emphasize re that. If you set up ArcGIS um, ArcGIS Enterprise with Image Server, then that provides uh, the people within the organization the ability to through a web browser or through ArcGIS Pro to connect to those servers, host the data, and then perform analysis on it. So in other words, it provides to the end user a SaaS type solution that's all within ArcGIS ArcGIS en Enterprise. Alternatively, if you use ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online, instead of using uh, um, you use ArcGIS Online as your portal, you can essentially do the same thing. Now, um, what you can also do is once you've created an item within one of those portals, you can register that item, for example, into ArcGIS Online or the other way around. Uh, so there is a way of in integrating between between the two, but they're really, in a way, two two separate things. There's ArcGIS Im Enterprise and and then it's ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online, but they do connect. Awesome, yes. Now it's like, you know, in the past probably we have the remote sensing and GIS taught separately, different software package, but now you can do all of this in the ArcGIS Image as a suite of the product that connected to each other. Mm -hmm. That's answer a bit of the way to question on that. All right, for the sake of the time, I'm gonna just continue in here for the last part. No, we have, have a list um, of resources. Yeah, Rena, Rina, did you have the slide that I yes. had the, 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 the slide before, just for the uh, imagery workflows? Um, yeah, I don't have it in here. Okay, Sorry, okay. Peter. That's, that's okay. Uh, but we, I I put the list on here. We will. Yep. Uh, so we have the list of the the comprehensive image workflow that gonna show not only the 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 topic but also the tutorial, the video a lot of workflow and um, we're going to send it to you. We also have education resources. We just released the materials to add the development of university level curricula, meaning we give the lessons, but we also give the slide deck. So any of you educator, you can actually pick and choose and adopt it for your classes. Okay? And we have a new MOOC, Imagery in Action. The first one will be uh, offered starting in August this year. August 11, the registration is open. And uh, this is actually gonna use the ArcGIS image in ArcGIS Online. So um, if you have time, uh, feel free to register. And we have the landing page for uh, dedicated for imagery and remote sensing in higher education, where we put all the resources links together there that you can use. And also we have the imagery remote sensing product page. Now, we're gonna send all of this list of resources by email uh, some of them will be tomorrow from the go to webinar, but I will also send you personalized email a week from now and covering the resources, especially the one that asked during the QA. Okay. Last thing, please join us at the S3 Education Summit that happening end of this month where all the educators come together and sharing experience and uh, also S3 User Conference next month please join us both virtually and please stay tuned for more imagery and remote sensing webinar in fall and winter 2021. One more thing before you go, please, please fill in the exit survey so you can connect with us. If you have question or, or need a system, this is a good way to connect with us. I also put my email at the end here. Um, if your question has not been answered, please contact me so I can respond back to you on that. Okay, there's so many questions, the topic that's that's kind of like off offline, but I can I can help you by email. Last thing, we would like to thank you all of you attending this webinar. We really appreciate all your participation. Thank you again and and see you in the next webinar. <laughs>